Okay, let's take a look at this thing we call chess. What's the idea? It's basically to get a check on the king or checkmate on the king or position ourselves in such a way that it disturbs the opponent's rhythm, blocks their pieces and gives us a bit of an advantage in the game. So that's the whole all really at the end of the day. We can look into it into other different terms and say, well, no, it relates to the psychological mind of um, development, strategy, you know, conflict management, all those types of things. You could put it into anything really within the world. But for basic understanding of playing the game, we're going to risk taking the pawn here. And this opponent is very maverick with the way that they're playing. Let's just keep it nice and steady. So we've, re we've removed pieces from the board. We've positioned the pieces on the board. There's nothing technical that I'm talking through here. But this is just about trying to understand what it is that chess is all about. The game of chess is moving pieces, finding appropriate positions, looking at what the opponent is attempting to do and trying to block off that um, aspect as well. And our king is a little bit airy still. Let's see what the knight wants to do. So attacking may be appropriately. Oh, okay. So it looks like they've given up the knight, but does the queen have some funky dancing? Oh, it does. Almost. I was thinking his queen was coming. Yeah, his queen's got a check on us, but we can bring the knight back. So we're going to take the knight. So it's all about looking at the strategies. Oh, I thought the queen was coming here. So this player looks like they might be giving up now then. Maybe. If we bring our queen here, we are then targeting this pawn in front of the king. So we can bring the queen here, finding an appropriate position, and basically attacking this pawn twice with the knight and the queen. This pawn is being attacked as well, but it looks like there's going to be a quick checkmate. I didn't know that it was going to be a quick checkmate, but it looks like it is. Okay, so that's the idea of chess in a sense. As we said, um, the story of chess really can be anything that you want it to be. You can relate it to anything in your life. Um, looking at the strategies and things, feeling like you're a pawn in your life, you know, being shoved around all over the place. But then if you get a promotion, um, then something good maybe potentially is happening in your life. So uh, in that sense, there, there's a positive side of things. So that's the art of chess. Just re-looking at the art of chess because the last game finished quite abruptly. So hopefully maybe we'll get a longer game here. So the in a nutshell, the movement, understanding the positions on the board, the placement of the pieces understanding the strength of the pieces and the weaknesses of the pieces as well um, is quite key in determining what type of movements you actually make so in in order to understand chess you have to know the value of your pieces which is basically understanding the value of your thought process because you're the one that's making the decision about those moves so I'm talking while I'm making my moves because at this moment in time I thought it looked pretty obvious I was going to attack the queen here. I could attack the queen on this side but they've got a pawn here. I might as well take this pawn I think. Can I support this pawn afterwards though? Because our pawn is going to be in the centre. What can we support it with? I suppose we could push through the centre here and support this way. Okay, let's attack the queen. So in essence, yeah, uh, so yeah, I'm talking through, but I'm concentrating now again. So we captured and we did say we're potentially coming here because it's going to get attacked. But now they've done a move that wasn't in our reading. So we'll take this way, balancing out the pawn. So it looks like a massive pawn attack type thing. His queen's going to be in front of ours. I don't think we need to waste this pawn now because this pawn will just take. Um, is there a better position for us? Really want to get castled, but you don't have to rush to castle if if the knight comes here. Mm, no, queen comes here. No, bishop attacks their queen. Let's smaller piece attacking the higher piece. Ooh, my word! 
Wow, okay, let's uh, just bring the knight across, blocking. It is a 40 minute game, and both players have been playing it like it's a blitz match or a bullet match. So they're attacking our rook, but our bishop is attacking their queen. It's a higher piece, so ordinarily you would just take the higher piece because it can do less damage to you on the board. And the bishop takes, so now our queen has got a nice diagonal towards their pawn or their higher piece. So again, this play is just like um, giving up pieces. Our bishop is under attack as well. Got to be mindful of that. But again, going for the higher piece is probably better, isn't it? So the queen actually coming for the pawn actually gets a higher piece off the board. So I'm going to go for the higher piece, even though the player is playing some maverick type of moves. And they've moved the king, so the rook is defending the, the knight. So we can freely now take, because this smaller piece here, the pawn, is less in value than the knight. So we'll take the knight off the board. They could still take our bishop off the board. We can take his knight off the board now. Or we can save our um, bishop. What do we want to do? I think we can reduce down the pieces. So I'm going to take the knight. And then put a check on the king. Our king hasn't got castle, but I don't think their rook has any space to come down and attack. So um, let's just bring the queen here. So the queen is moved out of the way so that the rook is defending the pawn. So just put a check on the king here. Just waiting for it to get to an appropriate position, maybe to try. I don't think the knight can actually get to it. Oh, it can. So it's given us space to actually attack the king. And the king's coming further down. Probably going to take a few pawns while it's doing this type of thing. I'm going to move this pawn here. Just to try and get the rook out into the game. They potentially may be looking at some stalemate things. Probably still coming down, coming for the pawn. And what is the rook doing really? Shall we just continue with have to move the queen out of the mate way though, don't I? So if I bring the bishop here, sorry, the king. So we can take, these rooks going to have sights of attacking here, but the bishop can protect. So it's a bit of a muchness really. So our knight could now, because of the support of this pawn, attack the rook and take the rook off the board. So again, this art of chess exercise, again, looks simplified. It's just based on what the opponent is doing. It does look like they have actually left the game now. So we will capture here. And they have left the game. Just doing the countdown. Three, two, one. And we'll claim victory on that. Okay, again, so the art of chess is about movement on the board. And how you feel about those movements. Looking at the value of the pieces reacting to what the opponent is doing on the board is their position better than your position <clears throat> have you got pieces that are under threat um, do you have to protect those pieces or can you attack a piece that is of higher value um, but making sure that your position is going to be okay because you might be falling into a trap of some sort if they're kind of giving up or sacrificing a higher piece so you've got to triple check those types of things but the art of chess in its own right is basically trying to get p positions and places um, on the board that make the opponent feel uncomfortable and then basically going for checks around the king or actually going for the major thing which is checkmate Let's see if there's a tougher game that we can express our art of chess with so as usual just bringing the knight through protecting the pawn here but understanding the relationship between the pieces as well what kind of relationship do the pieces have and which ones work better with which pieces i think it comes down to what is actually happening on the board so at any given moment any given time 
any piece can support and work together with any piece because it all depends on what the opponent has done and the type of position that you've ended up in so at this moment in time it looks fairly okay we'll give it a small smidgen to white because obviously they started first and we need to just get a few more pieces out or look for a better position is there some sort of funky tactical type maneuver that can happen probably missed the boat but could still do it I think which is like you know the knight taking the pawn here but I think if the rook comes across then we don't do that it's a little bit arty isn't it but you know but I don't think we can do it now because maybe this knight is here or maybe we can yeah so it take well no can't do it now because the pawn's just dropped I'm actually going for simple he could take the pawn here which drives him into the center of the board so it's like a sacrificed pawn the most annoying thing when you're playing a game is when people sacrifice pieces you go wow that's free and then they might sacrifice another piece and you go wow that is free but then oh my lord did you see what i just see see i didn't force the opponent to make that move did i they could have just taken the pawn here we we're talking about sacrifices and um, okay so they put the queen in a position where it could get taken by the knight and it looks like they've left the game and um, the resign button seems to be eluding people lately again so we will claim victory on that one okay again we're trying to look find a <laughs> a game to express how our art of chess but the game kind of cut short but again it's kind of proving the point as well that games where your performance looks like it's outstanding more times out of 10 it's what the opponent actually does in the game and if they've not found the appropriate moves to make in the game then that's going to give you a high performing um, type of situation so this is why you can't really beat yourself up if you're performing high and the opponent really wants to say well he's using an engine or whatever it is and you sat there and you're going yeah but if you have a look at the game then really the art of chess you've not used to the fullest of its extent you've not understood the value of the pieces you've not understood the value of the squares that you're moving the pieces to you've not understood the relationship between your pieces and yourself in order to make appropriate moves so games like this you know will give anybody a high performing type of evaluation so you really have to look at your own games in the art of chess and if you're wanting to improve your own personal art of chess then you have to really look at your relationship with your pieces as we said and the relationship with the movements that you're making and then own the moves that you are making in the game and you can't then blame the opponent for taking advantage of movements that you didn't take advantage of if you know what i mean